Now, a Crime Watch Daily murder mystery. They were the picture of a happy, loving family. Mum and Dad running a successful business. Their little girl, a star student and athlete. But one August day, things would come crashing down. And what police would find inside their Virginia home would still haunt them to this day. Our Pat Lalama has the story of the Short family. In a sleepy neighborhood of Bassett, Virginia, gunshots in the dead of night. What happened here haunts Lieutenant Curtis Spence of the Henry County Sheriff's Department. When I got there, I found the back garage door open. A ranch style house, normal for the area that we live in. Lieutenant Spence knows the folks who live here, Mike and Mary Short. The garage door was open and I found Mike Short uh, laying on a couch. With a bullet in his head. It was obvious to me that Mike had been shot in the head, uh, pretty much in the forehead, with a small caliber weapon. There was not a lot of blood spatter there with Mike. And it appeared that he never woke up and never knew what happened to him. It gets worse. As I went further into the house, uh, I found Mary Short in her bed. She was fully dressed, uh, and she was partially under the blankets on the bed. It didn't look like she had struggled at all. Uh, she had been shot in the back of the head, and what little bit of blood it was was just right there on her pillow. Spence knows Mike and Mary have a nine-year-old daughter, Jennifer. She's not there. The only thing that was out of place as I continued down the hall toward the back of the house was Jennifer's room. Her mattress was moved just slightly. Uh, the sheet was messed up and the pillow was laying in the floor. That is the only thing that I found out of place in the whole house. Two dead adults, one missing child. This simply doesn't happen around here. This was one of the largest crimes that had ever happened in Henry County and still to this day, it's one of the largest crimes that happened in my career. Spence knows it's too late to help Mike and Mary Short, but there is an urgency here. Find the girl. The unknown was where is Jennifer at? So a very big effort was made by uh, police officers from all around the region, search and rescue groups, volunteers coming in, and we would plot and map the area. And we searched for miles, checking to see if she had either run away from what had taken place inside the residence, or if she was a victim and taken just a short distance away from the home. Lane Perry, the sheriff of Wayne County, dug into the search. Early on, there was a whiff of optimism in the air. The effort was hopefully we were going to find her alive. Hopefully it was just a situation where when this heinous act started happening, she had just run out and run into the woods or something. And so we were very much trying to find her alive. Days pass. Mike and Mary are buried, and the search for the killer and little Jennifer drags on. The reward grows to $100,000. The number of searchers grows as well. Everyone offered assistance. Every adjoining agency to our jurisdiction and other jurisdictions sent in investigators and personnel to help with the investigation and help for the search. Also, almost every state and federal agency sent in investigators and people to help with this crime. Investigators come up with a person of interest, a guy named Chris Thompson, who'd worked for Mike. He had been with Mike the night before and found the bodies. But normally what happens on something like that, the, one, the last one to see him and the first one to find him is our bad guy. So of course we looked heavily at Chris Thompson as a person of interest in this case, simply because of the way we normally handle an investigation. But the Thompson angle goes nowhere. Spence works the scene even harder. Basically, I lived in the short house for three weeks along with several forensic technicians. The evidence left behind was Neil. I don't know whether the perpetrator of this crime was just that good or whether he was just lucky. At one point, cops cover the window with black plastic bags and go over the place with luminol, a spray cops often use to illuminate fingerprints and blood spatter. That turns up nothing. But Spence has a bright and clear sense of the killer. With the close range shots that both Mary and Mike sustained, it's been mentioned that it may have been execution style. I don't know what I would call it an execution style killing, but this person was a very cold human being to be able to shoot two people in the head as they slept. Police were mystified with this case. Two dead adults, a missing child, and no clue as to why. 
Could Mike and Mary have been involved in something that brought this violence on them? Drugs, debt, gambling, an affair, anything at all. But every place that police looked led them to the same conclusion. This was a loving family with no known enemies. There was nothing to indicate a bad lifestyle or to show any link why this act of violence would have been brought on them. Investigators even went so far as to disinter Mike's remains after hearing chatter that he might not be Jennifer's dad. DNA testing made clear that he definitely was. Then, more than a month after the murders, little Jennifer is found miles away from her house. Up next, where police found Jennifer and detectives narrow in on a suspect who left the country the day after the murders.